Hello artists, how are you today? It's Stephanie Ani coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio and we are very happy you are here with us today. We are. It is May 1st for you and it is April 11th for me. Now I wanted to go through and do a run through of all of the pages that I've made, kind of talk about some of the different products that we used, just to do a general overview. Okay. So I've tried to put these in some sort of order. Uh, this is the Arteza gouache. Isn't that cool? I really did like gouache paint. Now this is also from the same Arteza set of gouache. Uh, there are 60 colors. 12 of those colors are metallic. And now I have really indirect light on this, so it's a little bit harder to see but um, I will be using gouache more often. I would highly recommend it as a tool. Um, you get 60 colors. I think it's around $35, so it's quite affordable. It'll go a long way. This is craft paint on a gel press. Uh, craft paint is a little bit, well, is the, the least expensive paint that you can buy. Uh, beautiful colors. It works well for some things. I don't ever paint with craft paint, but uh, when you're using it with a gel press, it works out quite nicely. This is the Arteza metallic acrylic. This is the Arteza uh, regular acrylic paints. Put that one there so you can really get a focus in on it. Now I have made that splotchiness on purpose, um, but I like that I got that effect with both of them super happy again with the Arteza acrylic paints. Uh, the reason why I do like them, um, you know, you get a ton of colors again in their larger set. You do get some metallics in that large set too. The metallics that you get in uh, the set, I think it's 60 uh, colors. Uh, the metallics that you get in there are different than the metallics that you get in the metallic acrylic set of paint. So, um, very affordable, very affordable paint. And this is the Lumiere uh, paint. Uh, you guys have seen me use this quite often through my book. Um, it is very creamy. It has really nice coverage and the metallics are, are very beautiful. I like metallic paint. I'm not going to lie. Uh, this was the calligraphy ink. This is the iridescent Dr. P.H. Martin's calligraphy ink. Cool to use. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to trying that out again. That was a neat product. It really gave a unique, unique uh, finish. Nice and thick. This is uh, Chocolo chalk markers. They have really good deep coverage. Uh, I would not suggest to use them with watercolor paper. And remember, a lot of these products would have been more successful on maybe a mixed media paper instead of a watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is super, super absorbent. This is our Arteza watercolor set. Uh, there are, uh, gosh, how many colors are in that set? It's, it's an affordable uh, set. The colors are vibrant. Uh, they haven't faded and they, they're good to play with. <clears throat> Let's see, this is the Arteza um, watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils are, um, they're a little bit harder to build up the coverage. Uh, it takes a little bit more time to work with them. The colors are vibrant. Um, they do, the pigment washes away pretty quickly when you put water on it, so you have to be very sparing with the water. Um, but I do like the watercolor pencils. You can use watercolor pencils anywhere that you would use regular colored pencils. They uh, are generally more vibrant and put down more pigment than a regular colored pencil. So you might look at a watercolor pencil in place of a colored pencil. Kind of cool. And uh, here is the Neo Color 2. We had some Excellent vibrancy with that Neo Color 2. Um, I'm hoping that the colors are pretty true to life here. Again, this is kind of this offset light. I, 
Well, hopefully I shouldn't be doing this light. Let me look at something real quick. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty close, pretty close to the same thing. So this is the Ink Tense, the Derwent Ink Tense pencil, and this is the Derwent Ink Tense block. Love the control that you get with the Ink Tense pencil. Very, very vibrant colors. Neo Color 2, gorgeous colors, super creamy texture. Um, this one is the Distress Crayons. And then this one was the Gelatos. And then we have the Marabou Art Crayons. So all of them have um, their own properties that are good. There's not one that is right or that is wrong. The Neo Color 2, I liked a lot. The Derwent Ink Tense, yes, I am very happy I have these as a tool. They are more expensive. Not gonna lie, they are probably one of the more uh, expensive products out there, but you can really get some beautiful deep colors with them. Um, you don't need to buy a huge set of them. Buy a small set and see how you like it. And here were the Ink Tense blocks. Uh, the Ink Tense blocks were very cool. Uh, I don't think it's a must-have tool, um, but I liked them a lot. Uh, the Distress Crayons, they have um, a nice creaminess to them. Remember, I don't... Well, no, I have quite a few of the Distress Crayons. Um, and they're a cool product, you know, use whatever one appeals the most to you. Here is the gelatos. This was, remember the metallic, uh, iridescent gelato, uh, more than just the plain gelato. It was one of the sets that I have had purchased, uh, at one of the big stores with one of the 50% off coupons. They're, they're, they're nice. They have a nice shimmer to them. And, um, uh, it's hard to choose which, which product to use when. The um, Marabou Art Crayon, uh, this has really nice saturation. This one got quite dark, uh, but the colors are very creamy going on. Um, they were very blendable, and as you layered them more, they became you know, even more gorgeous. Uh, I, I, I love those spots of Mod Podge that I have underneath of there. This was uh, the chalk pastel, uh, not a fan of pastel. The colors are very vibrant and intense. Um, so, so as far as a, uh, you know, coloring a piece of paper, it did really well. I just am not a fan of pastels because they really do get everywhere. It takes a lot to stick them down. And then I had to spray this with a spray varnish or a, a, you know, a, a, some sort of clear coat. Uh, you have to protect it. And this, this still comes off even after spraying it with clear coat. Blech. Not a fan of pastel. Uh, this was the Everblend markers. It's kind of funny. Some of you were saying that you wanted to see this video. Um, you know, it, it worked out pretty good. Uh, I just wanted to show you more of the, the true blending. This one got kind of yucky, but um, I am looking forward to actually working with that uh, background. I think it'll be a fun one to work with. Here are our Arteza Real Brush Pens and our Tim Holtz uh, Ranger um, Distress Markers. So they're both a water-based marker. Uh, I think you know, like I said, I added a lot of water to this one. I didn't add as much water. The Tim Holtz uh, colors do seem to be more saturated. Um, did seem to be able to get darker colors with it, but it could have just been the uh, technique that I used with it too. I think you have to kind of build up the Arteza Real Brush Pens. Uh, I think the Tim Holtz probably is a little bit more intense and vibrant. Um, I do really like watercolor brushes. That's what these are. They're a watercolor pen. Um, I, I like to use them for shading, uh, outlining, and all of that type of thing. So they're, I would suggest getting something. You don't have to get a bunch of colors either. Just get a small set if you want to. Try it out. These are, um, this was Distress Oxide Spray. And where's the Distress Oxide? 
pads. Both of these are covered with Mod Podge, so it changes that Distress Oxide property. Uh, I would suggest getting one or the other. You don't necessarily need to get both. Uh, unless you can afford to get both, then by all means go for it because it's a cool product and I really do love it when we can um, build up those colors like that. And uh, then when you put that Mod Podge over the top of it, when it's in an actual layout in your book, it looks great. There is the spray inks. These are all water soluble. So if I were to take water and flick it on here, this, this would just come running right off. Um, the same with if I took Mod Podge, it would come up and go onto our painting. Um, but, uh, again, you put Mod Podge over the top of this, though, in kind of that light glazing uh, technique that I showed you earlier in the month of April. Um, you can get some really cool finishes with this. I love the, dis uh, the Dilution um, Spray. Shimmer Spray. This is the Illusion Shimmer Spray. Great product. And then I also had some Tattered Angels uh, brand in there too, which uh, I, I don't know much about the Tattered Angels brand. This was... This, this was the spray. Distress Spray Stain. Love those colors. This was Distress Spray uh, Ink. Distress Ink Pads. Distress Spray Stain. So you can get uh, similar effects with them. Um, again, the paper makes a difference because that ink really absorbed right into that watercolor paper. It will always make a difference. And then this was the archival inks used with um, alcohol. So as you spray alcohol into it, the pigment did soak through. I wanted to show you the back side of this guy actually. Look how much it's soaked through onto that back napkin. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that background. So that's how much that ink soaked through that watercolor paper. And this is thick paper. And then last but not least, we have our alcohol inks. And oh yes, I am such a fan of alcohol inks. I really truly am. Uh, then for the front covers, for the cover, we use all of the different, um, the Finnabar rust paste, rust effects, and craft paint. So it looks like Ozzy just showed up, and I'm going to sign off for now, and we will chat soon. Bye.